untangle your cabling mess. So if this grabs your interest, this webinar, there's probably a reason. Uh, probably have uh, a bit of a mess, perhaps, trying to untangle. Um, maybe not. Maybe you've got a very organized uh, cable system, which is great. But um, chances are you're probably here for a reason, which is to untangle your cabling mess. So we're going to talk about that in the, in the context of uh, Graphical Networks NetTerrain, our product uh, network documentation tool. Um, to kind of help you out with uh, untangling that mess. I got a polling question before we get started. Uh, let me start this polling question. How's your cabling right now? Um, should have launched. Uh, launch, maybe. There we go. There it goes. So there's a hot mess, barely passable. Okay, but causing extra work and pretty good. So it's all good either way. Sometimes I get some pretty good stuff. People are just looking for a better place to put the documentation or information. Most folks are out there using tools like Excel, uh, which is, which is you know, can serve the purpose, I suppose. A little more time consuming, but anyway. Yeah, about hot mess to extra work. So about, about, about half and half right now. Um, so continuing on, let's see. Got a cabling headache. Well, you can see this guy, he probably has a bit of a cable and headache, right? Oh, actually, sorry, let me uh, close the poll. Now you should see my screen again, sorry. Got a cable and headache. Um, yeah, so that's quite a bit bit of a mess there with cables. Um, pretty hard to track and troubleshoot and that kind of thing. I guess the solution might be if you got a problem, just uh, cut the cable out and add a new one. Just keep going from there, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, moving on. There's an easier way. Know exactly which ports you have free. Know what each device in your network is connected to. and Know exactly what is connected to those connections and so on, right? Um, that's, I mean, that's the ultimate goal is, is you want to document. Uh, so it helps you in some way. It doesn't, uh, isn't too burdensome. But, I mean, you're always going to have an issue of, uh, you know, spending time on the documentation and keeping it up to date versus what are you getting out of it. I mean, if you're not getting enough out of it compared to the work you put in, then what's the point of doing it? You know, I'd say don't. However, uh, if you can document and you have a good process in place to sort of keep, uh, then by all means, you should probably um, be doing that. So next polling, um, what's your biggest pain? Planning, troubleshooting, decommissioning equipment. Give that a second. Looks like uh, most folks are heading for the uh, troubleshooting side. I got a few planners as well, but um, yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's hard to to do any of those things like planning. How do I how do I plan for new equipment uh, if I don't know where stuff things are right now, how it's connected, and so on. So I don't even know if I have a drop that I can use. Uh, do I have enough cables and connections between the points that I'm going after? If you're doing something like outside plant, how do you plan a circuit path if you don't have uh, the documentation around your fiber, fiber strands, uh, links, where those links are, and so on? It's pretty tough. Uh, troubleshooting, how do you troubleshoot an issue? Uh, you know, someone calls up, says, hey, I got this problem, I can't get connected, or it's really slow, or whatever it happens to be. You want to know what the path is. You know, if I'm, if you're there, what are you connected to? What's in the process there? What's uh, between A and B, between you and whatever it is you're trying to get to or do work on kind of thing. So, and decommissioning equipment, uh, taking things out of the system. You know, it's more than just, hey, pulling it out of the rack. You got cables dangling. What do you do with those? Do you just pull those out too? Are you marking the ports that are free now so you know that those ports are free? And what about the space in the rack? Are you marking that as free now? What about strands? You have fiber strands. You want to make sure those are accounted for so you're not um, thinking that you're running out of uh, space. Or the reverse, you want to know when you're going to run out of space, right? That goes back to the kind of planning. So, so you want to be able to drill down. You can go from a high-level uh, map um, down into a device all the way down to the port. That's the bottom right corner. And maybe you have a, a logical view, maybe some discovered information and so on. But, you know, being able to show connections, how things are. And, and 
you know, what kind of connections are you trying to track? Data, power, again, fiber, outside plan, inside, and so on. You have all these different options. Of course, I would always tell you to focus on the thing that's causing the most, most problem. Uh, so see it in action. Let's, let's take a look at uh, the tool in action. Um, of course, I have to somehow escape out of here. There we go. All right, not big on PowerPoint. So this is uh, NetTerrain. NetTerrain is a tool that you can get to through a web browser. You can host it yourself where you install software on your hardware, or we have a cloud option as well. So what can you do with NetTerrain? Well, from the standpoint of if you're trying to do documentation, you can uh, create a hierarchy. By the way, the things I'm showing you, these are just demo example projects. We're pretty flexible tool. Objects in the catalog are really uh, can be user defined. You can put your own objects in here. Uh, the hierarchy, the things you're going to see, the drawings, and so on. It's really kind of up to you. And again, what you're trying to do in your environment. So I'm just going to show a few sort of examples where you might have cables and cable paths. Uh, here I've got a, a, a map. This is a background image that I uploaded to act as a background image of my, uh, you know, world map here. I've got some different locations. Uh, these are called sites, objects. I've got some data in these uh, fields. I can double click on an object, drill down, and see, hey, where am I at? I've got some buildings. You see it, the titles at the top there. I double click, drill down. And those buildings could have data fields, addresses, contact persons, things like that. I've got a, a view here. I'm inside the building, showing a picture of the building, showing some floors, right? All good stuff. I got some data being calculated here, number of devices and ports. That's all automatic. Uh, it counts all that stuff for me. If I double click, I can drill down and get into a uh, sub diagram layer. So, so you can see I'm kind of going from a higher level of view and I'm working my way down into more and more detail. So in this case, I'm basically heading for the uh, the Eden location, right? So now I'm inside the uh, actual data center. I've got these different objects here on the floor plan. There's a floor plan here. In fact, I can uh, turn that floor plan off if I want to so you can see it. Yep, there you go. And I'll turn it back on. That's a Again, a background image that's been uploaded. I can, uh, these are all cabinets. Really, like, what are the things with the different colors? Uh, this is a cabinet. This is a cabinet. The reason they're different colors is I'm actually calculating uh, racialization right now. Um, so for the cabinet view. So I can then go into this cabinet, see things like power and weight, but what does that have to do with connections? Well, again, hierarchy allows you to build out where the connections are specifically. So if you have links, cables, and so on, you might have uh, power connections, right? You have devices connected to a PDU. You want to see, hey, I've got this PDU, this PDU port. Uh, I've got some free ones. This one here is feeding a power supply. What's, where is that device? I can double click or just see it on the link itself, and it'll take me to the, the PDU of the device that I'm, that I'm part of, right? Or data connections. So now I'm managing cables. I can see, oh, here I've got a uh, port. I've got a link. I've got a connection here. This yellow indicator tells me I'm connected to this, this port on a different device. I can double-click that, and it'll take me to what I'm connected to. Or I can go back, and I can see, um, go back to reverse, see where I came from, right? And then also you might want to build out a path. You might want to see, hey, I start here. You know, you're inside. You imagine you're inside the data center and you're staring at this device inside the cabinet, right? And I'm like, oh, there's port zero. I'm trying to do some troubleshooting. I just want to know, hey, where does this thing connect to? Well, I know what it connects to. It connects to a patch panel, but great. But where does that connect to? I don't want to have to sit there and hop through all these things. So I can um, double click on this link and this will generate what we refer to as a CLR view. And the circuit out record is nice because it gives you a full physical path. And so you're going to start on one end and it's going to work down to the other. So it's showing me, zoom in a little bit, this is the port that's inside this device, that's inside this rack, and so on. And I can see this port connects to this port. So this is basically a device to patch panel. This is the same patch panel with a cross connect. This patch panel connects to this patch panel, which has a cross connect, and so on. So I can see, I'm standing in the data center, I can see this now what it's connected to, but ultimately where does it terminate? And now I know that. Why? Because I've documented it. I've put the information into the system. The system builds out the uh, CLR view for me automatically, and it knows what's connected to what. So then I can go 
oh, here we go, double click, take me to, let's say, the port on the card. This is a card inside a chassis, actually, uh, inside the device. So then you start to see, um, again, port to port, end to end, go up a level. Let's see where I'm at. There's a card in the chassis, and then you can see the chassis in the uh, cabinet. So those are the types of things you can do if you have a documented um, cables, links, and so on. What about uh, other views? Maybe I want to see something like outside plan. So we can go in to look at a uh, diagram, a map. So I can actually have a map. Uh, we integrate with OpenStreetMaps where I can look at the paths, cable paths, right? And inside this cable, I have a relationship. So here I've got a, a duck bank path and I've got a bundled link. So I actually have a conduit that's inside this path and I can see what the conduit is and so on. So you can start to build relationships between paths, conduits, cables, and so on. Uh, so when I, when I go in, I can start to understand exactly what cables I have, where those cables are inside, which conduit, the conduit, you know, what path does it follow, what's the, the duct bank that it's associated with, and so on, the duct bank. Um, so let me, for instance, if I, uh, I'll turn on some strands, uh, not those, let me turn this one on. I'm uh, using a, uh, the, I'm just doing some filtered links over here so I can just see the particular link of interest. So this allows me to see things like, um, in this case, I'm looking at a cable, and this cable has 24 strands in it, 14 are dangling right now. What does that mean? That means I have 14 uh, strands, cables that are currently really not in use right now. Um, so I can move this over a little bit. I can click on a interface and I can see what I'm connected to. So I can look at a strand and I can see this strand. What is that strand connected to? Well, it's, well strand one's connected to port nine. Strand two is connected to port 11. Strand three is connected to port uh, basically three. So it's showing me and telling me exactly um, the strands, the individual fiber strands that are in this cable. And that th those have endpoint connections these connections to specific devices so I can go see those devices in the uh, in the tool as well in the hierarchy this is basically showing you all the buildings where you are so and you can mark fiber as active if it's active it means it's um, available to be uh, turned into a circuit path if you want to or if it's bad and so on so again you're building up your your information you've got cables you want to document um, and again, you'd, you'd focus on the, the task at hand. Maybe it's outside plant, maybe it's inside plant, maybe it's data cables or just fiber, or you know you have a subset of, of the cables that you're trying to track. So in a tool like ours, we allow you to put all the data in and hopefully give you the logic between uh, you know the visualization side, uh, reporting, but also the, the tools to, to show you uh, information like paths or determine a path. We also have algorithms that can determine strands in use and what's the best path to follow and, and that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, with that said, uh, let me um, bring back up on the screen. If there's any questions, please uh, please start to post those now. Um, while I'm waiting, I'm just going to go down to this slide, show your website. Um, Fred's the sales uh, person you can call, you can call us too. My name is Jason, uh, Jason Sherman at graphicalnetworks.com. So uh, if you want to reach me, but uh, Fred's usually the better one to reach, uh, at least at the beginning. So um, let me just take a look and see if there's any questions. Uh, questions, here we go. Uh, can you add, question one, can you add a spreadsheet or NetViz diagram? NetViz, what is that? Um, no, I'm just actually kidding. Um, sorry, let me escape out of there. And I'll go to uh, back to my project here. So we have different options for doing imports uh, of data. Uh, in, in addition to what you see here, we also have some other tools as well that I'll talk about. But you can Excel import data. You can import data from uh, NetViz. It's a legacy tool that's out there. A lot of folks used in the past. You can do things like Visio uh, import and export as well. Uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint, PDF, 
um, and then we have some static HTML export and PNG and uh, that kind of thing. So it's uh, good stuff. A lot of options there on importing and exporting data. Can you color code fiber? Uh, yeah, you can actually color code the uh, links. You saw probably some of my uh, links, different colors. Um, the fiber strands themselves are actually um, just associated with the link, so you're not really color coding, although it can be a data field as a color as well. So, But you'll notice, like, if I turn conduit on, it'll be a different color than my uh, strands and so on. Uh, you know, kind of like the duck bank color myself. Um, color code. So, yeah, we have these other things. You do visual overrides. In fact, I do some of that with my buildings. I've got, you know, if I want to change the color of the building, I do a little visual override there. Um, normally, I just do a see-through building, but that's just me. Is there a free trial we can use? Absolutely not. No. Um, we have a cloud instance, netterrain.com. You can sign up and play around with Netterrain. Uh, for 14 days. I usually recommend you give us a call first only because you might want to talk about what you're trying to do and make sure, you know, we'll, we'll make sure you're the right fit for what you're trying to do if we can do things uh, that you need uh, before you get going with all that and we can answer questions. But um, is this all a manual effort? Can you import spreadsheets? Yeah, as was mentioned, you've got different options, but spreadsheet imports in one. We also have uh, something we call the integration toolkit which allows you to connect to external data sources. And we also have um, this uh, tool that we call the collector, which allows you to uh, actually do discovery, SNP discovery. It can connect to different sets of data, vCenter, AWS, uh, SolarWinds. Um, I don't know, there's a few others out there, too, that we can connect to. So it brings data. So it, in fact, um, what you want to try and do is take as much manual effort out of your project as you can. And how do we do that? Well, you do it with different different options. You do it with data that you currently have in spreadsheets, um, data that's being collected automatically from systems, network monitoring, network management. CMDB is a big one. We have a connector for service now. So you know, there's a lot of things out there you can connect to and pull data and do it on a regular basis so the system stays up to date. For fiber plant, can you import shapefiles, KMZ, KML? KMZ, KML, yes, you can. If it's shapefile, I think you have to convert it to one of these formats first. Can you import data from my Access database? Uh, yep. Integration Toolkit, again, another part of NetTerrain, allows you to connect to a database like Access, SQL Server, Oracle, et cetera. Pull data directly into uh, NetTerrain, so good stuff. How extensive is your catalog? Can I add, can we add our own items? Yeah, so our catalog, you see some of my devices over here on the right. I mean, it's my catalog. So uh, probably 5,000 or so. We actually have a lot more devices now. Um, so, yeah, there's tons of devices that we have uh, and uh, cards for the, those devices, et cetera. So that's you know part of the package when you purchase it. But in addition, moving forward, you can create your own objects in our catalog. You just press a button, say add new, go through the process of creating it. You need an image and you can associate ports and cards and other things. So it's not too terribly hard to do. In fact, it's, it's actually pretty easy. You can also request those from us, devices. So if you have a new device that you purchase from, let's say Cisco, and maybe it's a new widget, and you're like, hey, it's not your catalog, can you add it? Uh, you can open a request if you're a customer, and then we'll, uh, we'll send that to you. Does that train have a way to measure distance of fiber? Yeah, you can you can click on a, on a on a link on the map and do a measurement. It'll give you a measurement. You can hover if you want to see it in kilometers or meters. <clears throat> so sort of do some measurements for you and uh, that information. It can do it based on a point as well. If you right click and do a measurement, it's going to be based on where the arrow is. So it gives you the from origin to destination kind of thing. So oh, uh, I measure cable show port to port cable tracing. Yeah, that was that CLR I showed earlier. That um, circuit layout record where you can see the port to port with you know ports are associated with devices and so on so it gives you that whole hierarchy called the swim lanes versus the path view we have that in different ways there's the visual view uh, we have some reports you can run to that are um, gives you sort of that CLR overview as well so it's good stuff anything else any other questions uh, yeah don't see anything else so if you guys have questions, uh, just uh, let us know. And uh, reach out to Fred and myself, uh, give us a call. 
um, from current slides. Let me see if I can get this uh, thing back on here so you can see the phone number. Uh, website, of course. If you go to the website, all the information will be there, but give us a shout. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, let us know. Thanks a lot for attending. Appreciate it.